Hi, my name is John Vasco. I'm Manager of Content and Community for AICHE. I'm here today with Donna Bryant. Uh, she works at, in environmental operations for a company uh, called Syngenta. She's also an officer for AICHE's management division and now the vice chair for the Baton Rouge uh, local section of AICHE. Donna, welcome. Thank you. Glad to be here. Great. Donna, I wanted to talk to you a little bit today about the um, what's called the NCEES Principles and Practice of Engineering Exam, commonly known as the, the PE exam, and it sort of covers all disciplines of, of engineering, but uh, specifically, I understand that the chemical engineering PE exam will change from a pen and paper exam to a computer-based testing. Uh, the, in fact, April of next month, 2017, will be the last pen and paper exam. Yes. Uh, and we're sort of pioneers in this uh, area because we're the first discipline to do this computer-based testing, so it's, it's kind of exciting. No, it definitely is. But when you took it, it was pen and paper, mm -hmm. and uh, just uh, I'm just curious. To th tell me a little bit about why did you decide to take the PE exam? Okay. Um, well, so my dad is a professional engineer. He actually is a professional engineer in the mechanical engineering realm, and so he uh, he had always kind of told me um, about be being a professional engineer as I was growing up, and so I was really encouraged by him to pr um, to go ahead and. Pr like uh, achieve that um, or work towards it and then also I wanted to have it just as like a um, something to have in my back pocket in case something would ever happen like in the in the future that I could always do consulting because mm -hmm. if you work in industry you don't necessarily need to be a professional engineer because of the industrial exemption okay. but if you do any kind of consulting work and that is designated as engineering work you have to be professionally um, like ordained as a engineer. Okay, so and it's quite beneficial if, you're, yes. if you plan on doing consulting. Mm -hmm. right. And so I kind of wanted to leave that door open um, for for the future, and so I wanted to go ahead and work towards it. So when I, before I graduated, got my fundamentals of engineering exam, and then four years after um, working as a, an engineer, then I ended up deciding to take my professional en engineering exam. Okay. So it's, a, it's a, quite a long journey, I guess. Yes, <laughs> yes. So as I understand, the, it's it's not an easy exam. Um, it, at, at the time that you took it, when it when it was pen and paper and still mm -hmm. will be for one month, it was sort of like an eight-hour experience, mm -hmm. morning and afternoon. What? Um, h how did you prepare? And if you were to turn back time and do things differently, would you do anything differently? Um, so how I ended up preparing was uh, I convinced or I, I was talking about wanting to uh, take the PE exam at work and so one of my coworkers she had been wanting to take it too and so I can so we formed a study group together and uh, we came up with a schedule on um, you know what we wanted to study and then when and then we also um, ended doing like a, a little a class um, over the internet to kind of make sure that we covered everything because we do a wide variety of the things that are on the exam like at work already but some of the ones like some of the more reactions and mm -hmm. kinetics we don't necessarily do at work as much and so I wanted to make sure that if I would take it I would pass the first time and I wouldn't have it you know hanging over my head so I decided to go full board in study as much as I could study with her um, stick to the schedule and and we just did a lot of problems, um, a lot of review, and um, and it worked out. We both ended up passing. Yeah, that's um, we don't know. I mean, just find out if you pass. You don't necessarily oh, it's find like out. Pass, pass or fail, mm -hmm. right? And over what period? Of, like, how long did you study? Over like a couple of months, or yeah, a couple of months. We ended up setting up times where we would just uh, study, like um, like during our lunch breaks, uh, right. like two days a week, and then we would meet on um, like on a Saturday for a couple hours okay. and and just stuck to the schedule. That was, it was nice to ha study with someone because mm -hmm. I was able to actually stick to the schedule right. um, as opposed to postpone things. Right. Well, I'm glad you both passed. <laughs> yes. That, 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 that would be harder <laughs> if one of you didn't. Yes. And would you say that, um, would you, do you have any tips for people when you actually get to the location to take the exam? Because some people get really nervous. 
I would just make sure that, because um, you can bring all the books that you need for references, and so I would just, just recommend for people to actually know what books that you're going to bring beforehand and have things marked that you know that you're going to use, right. and don't bring too many books, because right. um, I know that some people are like, oh, I can bring all these books that I had from undergrad, and they will help me. If you don't know what's in the books, or as well as you, as well as you need to, then they won't help you at all. Right. So, so you need to be able to like quickly reference something. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, it sounds like. And then at the test, don't be intimidated because you um, end up taking it with all different engineering disciplines. And so like a lot of civil engineers, they need to bring a lot more books than we do. Mm -hmm. And so don't be intimidated by the literal like two um, like two boxes of books that they that they bring in with right. them. Uh, don't think you're unpre or don't think you're like unprepared because right, you see right. that. <laughs> right. Somebody else did 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 yeah. need more preparation. Yeah. So uh, I understand the P exam is designed for engineers of any discipline, any chemical any engineering discipline who have a minimum of four years experience, work experience in their chosen discipline. Could you speak uh, to how you think it's particularly well suited for chemical engineers? I think it's a good platform for us as chemical engineers to be able to showcase like your knowledge of the of the actual like material um, mm -hmm. to both employers as well as to your, yourself um, and then you know just be able to um, be able to study and, and look at a wide variety of things that we actually do as chemical engineers. Mm -hmm. So you think it, it probably makes one more employable and you know make your certainly make your resume stand out? I think so. I yeah. mean I know um, one of the things that I try to do um, with like new engineers or when I'm I actually just hired an engineering uh, an engineer um, into my group and one of the things that I kind of asked as I was interviewing was asking if they were interested in, you know, have they taken the fundamentals of engineering exam, are they interested in it, just kind of seeing like how interested they are in their engineering field and how much they want to, you know, prepare themselves for the future. So, I mean, mm -hmm. I know I use that to mm -hmm. kind of like judge, um, um, you know, kind of like see how future engineers are and I, and I think that other people do that as well. Mm -hmm. And four years, is that, is there a, is there a sweet spot in someone's career? Is four years the like the, the magic number, or could it be any time? Like if somebody's been pre uh, you know in industry for ten years, for example, could they still take the life uh, take mm -hmm. the uh, exam? So um, actually, yeah, you can you can take it um, a different amount of uh, times and stuff, mm -hmm. but it just has to be a minimum of four years. Okay, so and that's a rule. It, it okay. is in most states, um, and usually you have to take your fundamentals of engineering and mm -hmm. then wait four years and then be able to take it, but um, but it can be longer than that. Mm -hmm. um, I know that actually in Louisiana where I got mine, they have, they've been starting out this new program where you can take your PE exam before your four years is like come, before you come of age, mm -hmm. I guess as you would say, mm -hmm. for four years, um, but you won't get your, you won't be officially licensed until mm -hmm. the four years mark reaches. Um, I decided to wait for the four years um, just because I wanted to have the full amount of experience, but then also since it was something new, I wanted to make sure that um, since Louisiana was doing that and mm -hmm. I wasn't sure about other states, I wanted to make sure that if I ended up moving to another state, my life would be covered. It, yeah. I would be covered, and I wouldn't necessarily have to take the test over again in another state. Yeah. <laughs> yeah after all that, yeah, yeah you don't I, have to do another two months of studying. Yeah. So I'm not sure, um, you know, what's what other states are really doing, but I just wanted to make sure I had everything all set right. in stone, so that way I'd be good to go. Excellent. Well, it sounds like you were really well prepared for it. Well, I want to thank you so much for sharing your thoughts about the PE exam. I, I think uh, people who listen to this or watch this video will have a good understanding of what they will need to do, and uh, hopefully we'll consider it. Thank you so much, Donna, and I hope you enjoy your conference here. Thank you. Thanks.